<laughs> and that is the fastest, most accurate way to actually find the real tempo of the audio file that you're going to be working with and lock it in to your uh, grid in Studio One. Hey, man, that Studio One content on YouTube is ass, but it's all good. I got you. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel, or welcome for the first time if you one of my Studio One people out here looking for some help in PreSonus Studio One, man. I'm Wavy Wayne from WavyWayne.com, and my goal is to help you to record and mix better and faster. Now, I'm going to just get this out the way. It has just a lot of misinformation, bad information, and slow as hell information about Studio One and how to work uh, with Studio One on YouTube. So if you are just about as frustrated as I've been, I am just going to start to create a source for you. So go ahead and hit subscribe because there's going to be a whole lot more Studio One tutorials coming down the pipeline. Today's video, though, is going to be something that is one of the critical first steps that you should do whenever you're starting up a new session, whether you're about to record vocals or something, which is typically what I like to do, drop a beat in, um, have my clients to come through and record some vocals. One of the first things that I want to do in that session is set the tempo. Stick around for the end of the video when I talk about a little bit on why I like to set the tempo and how we can use that. But for now, let's just get off into how to actually do it in Studio One. So the first thing that I'll do um, is go ahead and create a new song. And I'll just go ahead and call this um, S1 Wavy. Okay. So I'm just going to do that. One of the main things that I want to make sure that I don't check right here is stretch audio files to song tempo. What that's going to do is change the actual timing of the audio files that I import. I want whatever beats I found that I want to work with and record to, I want to keep those exactly how they are when I import them. So I don't want to check this. I want to make sure that that's actually turned off. All right. Um, you can choose the location where you want to save your session. I always rock with a 48 bit 24, yada, yada, yada. That's all good. We're going to hit okay all right so first thing i'm gonna do here is just drag and drop my beat right onto the timeline here and try to get it as close as possible a couple of things that we want to do before we actually start to find our tempo is first let's says first go up to studio one menu and then right where it says keyboard shortcuts click there and then go down and change your uh keyboard mapping scheme to Pro Tools, okay? Now, this is me because if I'm going to be teaching you Studio One, I'm going to be teaching you using Pro Tools shortcuts. So that's one of the first things that I would do is go ahead and change my keyboard mapping scheme over to Pro Tools so that we can use the shortcuts that we've known and loved from Pro Tools, the original DAW, over here in Studio One, all right? So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm just using T to zoom in, R to zoom out. So I'm using that little shortcut. And what you'll notice is that there's a little bit of dead space here at the beginning of the beat. Um, that's just going to throw our time and grid off. We want to be really accurate to that grid. So what I want to do is just go ahead and trim this clip away and get rid of any dead area. And I'm going to actually go right up to this very first transient. Let's go right up to this first large transient. Now I'm just going to drag this clip and make sure that it's all the way at the beginning of my session. Another thing that we want to also make sure we do, we're going to hit this little eye to open up the inspector. And right where it says tempo, we don't want it to follow. So we're going to just hit don't follow on the tempo. And I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. So when I play this, y'all can still hear me. So I'm pretty much ready to go and find my tempo. All I need to do now is start to actually play my, my beat that I have in here. And I'm going to go down right at the bottom of this transport section where it says tempo, and I'm going to tap quarter note values as the song is playing, right? Quarter note timing of my beat that I have in here, and a rough estimated tempo will be dropped down here. Now, the part where I say it's a rough estimated tempo is because this tapping the tempo is only going to give you whole values. If your tempo is not exactly 95 or 96, maybe it's 95.5, um, you won't be able to find that by tapping the tempo. We're going to have to do the second step to my find the tempo process that you ain't going to find nowhere else on YouTube, man. It's the only place to get the fastest, most accurate tempo 
tempo detection in Studio One. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit play and then we're gonna tap this section that says tempo. And let me turn this metronome off because we can hear that it's, you know, it's all off. This is not 120 beats per minute. And I'm gonna actually just go ahead and drop in a little closer to where the uh, drums kick in. Tap, 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 two, two, one, two. Ah, that was double time. One, two, three, four. And as I'm doing this, I'm looking for the numbers there to kind of start lining up with the transients, right? And I'm talking about the numbers on these grid values to kind of start lining up with my transients. Let me just get in time. All right, cool. So I feel like we pretty close at a tempo of 68 beats per minute. Now what I'm gonna do is zoom in here so we can see, right? If you notice, you see how bar five is actually starting a little bit right beyond this, uh, this transient part marker that I have here. So our tempo is not, it, it might be accurate, but it's just a little bit off. That's why I tell you tap the tempo. It's gonna get you pretty close. But you see, we have gotten pretty close to where we need to be. Uh, we just need to make an adjustment. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is go right up here and open up the tempo track. I'm just gonna click here where it says open tempo track. And then I'm gonna zoom in. And let's just hear this to make sure yeah, so bar five should really be starting at that transient, okay? And so what I wanna do is come right up to my tempo line here. I'm gonna hold command down on my keyboard. It's gonna be control if you on a uh, PC. I'm gonna hold command down. And then I'm also, I'm gonna click. And before I drag anything though, I'm gonna hold the option key. If I just start to drag now, it'll create a node, uh, a tempo node. And I don't want to do that, right? So let's let's back that up. And what I want to do, actually, hold command. I want to click and then hold option. And this will allow me to adjust my entire tempo. So I'm going to just go ahead and drag that bar five marker to the start of that transient there. And I'm just going to zoom in a little more. The, and each time, I just want to zoom in to be as accurate as possible. So I'm just going to click again, hold the command key down. If you're on a Mac, control if you're on a PC and click. And then I'm going to hold the option key on a Mac or Alt on a PC and drag this bar five marker right about there. And it's really letting me know that my tempo is looking like 69.046, right? Once I get right up on that transient, okay, I'm in a zero crossing point. I probably can get it even closer to that section right there, okay? So now, whenever I make edits, that should be perfect, right? Let's come right over to this transient. Oh, you see how that's off a little bit too. So one thing that we also wanna do is check this further down the timeline because as tempo drifts, we wanna make sure that we're staying accurate uh, to that tempo. So I can see that we are getting a little drift here. I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna correct that further down. And now we should be a whole lot more accurate throughout the, yeah, cool. <laughs> and that is the fastest, most accurate way to actually find the real tempo or the audio file that you're gonna be working with and lock it in to your uh, grid in Studio One. Now let's talk about a couple of reasons on why it's actually important to have the tempo locked into your session uh, when you're working in Studio One. One of them is gonna be for your time-based effects like delays, right? Whenever you create delays or echo effects, oftentimes they will uh, match the delay timing, whether it's quarter note, eighth note, 16th note, whatever you set it to, it will be based off of the session's tempo. You want the tempo of your session to be accurate so that those delays play really nicely and sound musical and in time with the performance that you're working on. Another reason is gonna be editing, right? Maybe flying your hook. If, if I wanna take, uh, flying the hook is the process of recording it one time, maybe in the beginning of the song where it starts, and then any time that the chorus of the hook comes back in the song, we can simply copy it and paste it. 
if we have our tempo detected and it's accurate and our session is locked to the accurate grid, well then copying and pasting and moving that section, that song section around is gonna be super easy. You're not even gonna have to think about it. So I'm gonna have some videos coming up uh, soon about setting up your delays and also flying your hooks in Studio One. If y'all are gonna be looking forward to that, make sure you hit subscribe and drop down in the comments and also let me know what other Studio One content y'all wanna see. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. Check out the website where I also have some amazing Studio One session templates that are designed to help you start recording and mixing better and faster today. Be dope.